just thought to take a little time out to thank the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for season six. Thank you. Who would have thought a podcast could be a gift, really? That pressing B could spiritually uplift and simultaneously give a Pharisee fits. <laughs> all in all, you the one controlling it, so the Lord is my shepherd. I can't go skit, so this new pot life is like a skit, though. A lot of people swinging. I didn't even throw a pitch, though. Uh, forehead is flint, what I'm a flinch for? Nothing. We all gon' repent for what we did, so I'ma keep it moving. Ain't no stripper or no cussing gonna ruin what we doing. We are dwelling in communion. Assignment is different. Dwellers get the sentiment. Vulnerability's my superpower. How many feeling it? Thank you, Lord, for this influence. Without you, influence just don't make sense. Nah. Of 13, 14, 15. Oh, did we already end it and starting back? Oh, we live again? We're live again with audio. Welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen. Take two. <laughs> Welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen. Take two. This is take two, okay? So um, what had happened was... We had um, a little audio situation, and we bought a new, new we board. bought a new uh, piece of equipment. Yes, sir. And as a result, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes technology, you just got to be figuring out what is what is. So, I mean, it is a thing. Are we good now? We are good now. We are Gucci yes, now. We are Gucci now. Oh, I'm so happy. Hey, everybody. I love you guys. Hope you're all good. I'm in the chat with y'all. I'm up in this live chat. I love you guys so much. It's so good to. <laughs> ah, why do my eyes fall on? Where is this girl? Whoa, don't leave. Don't leave. Renetta Barnes. Renetta Barnes. Hair looks moist. <laughs> Listen, I do not like the word moist except for cake. That's hey, the only thing facts. that gets to be moist. Every big facts. Anything else for me is a slippery slope because I can get childish. Um. <laughs> Yes, well, it is. <laughs> it it <laughs> moist hair. Oh God, no! Just please, cake. <laughs> Can cake just be moist, please? I don't do it. Um. Uh, hola, cómo estás? Uh, me, um, uh, español. Uh, hablas, uh, um, personas? Is that my Spanish-speaking friends? Hola a todos. 
mi gente que habla español, mi gente que habla español. Te amo mucho, bendiciones, um, tú agradezco. Um, um, te amo um, con todo mi corazón. Good. Te amo con todo mi corazón. Okay. okay. Yay. A a a. Uh, Palessa Malambo. Zulu, South Africa. Su uh, Sabubona? Sabubona. Oh, that sounds so beautiful. Oh, Sabubona. I think my ancestors just flipped inside. <laughs> um, I love you guys so much. Uh, listen, y'all are wild in these comments already. <laughs> Nothing makes me happier than to see Tim's bony knee <laughs> and foot bottom. My Mondays... Don't start until I see that. My bony. It is a bony knee, though. Listen, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. If y'all, listen, I don't, I have very low inhibitions and I'm not easily embarrassed. So that is, you're right. That's a bony knee. That is a bony knee. Um, and my foot bottom. And y'all see my little crypt toes? Let me get those in the shot. I know y'all don't want those. Look at that big toe, though. How do I get that over there? I remember the first time my, my friend actually thought I broke both of my toes. Cause you see how this 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 toe curves? Yeah. He thought I broke both of my toes. They're just like that. And Noah's toes are the exact same way. But I ran a four two in high school. I had wheels. <laughs> wheels. Pew. I'm fast as boy. <laughs> <laughs> everyone everyone just got like real on edge <laughs> he broke his covenant already got it. <laughs> nah but that meme is hilarious i'm fastest boy <laughs> fastest boy hey i love y'all so much so grateful to be here um mondays are mondays are a vibe man i i love mondays i just love hanging with y'all and so um we up in the chat. We are chilling. It's Q and A day. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what Mondays are all about. And um, um, I do. You know what? I want to start with. Uh, I guess I need to start with a little bit of business. We're you know? fired. I got it. I got it. It's okay. I'm filling out my Indeed <laughs> resume right now. Is it now. the hat? Is it the cowboy hat? Has it been a little disrespectful? It's the fact that we didn't have audio before we started. It's, we didn't have audio before. And uh, we have no HR department, so Tim is a tyrant. It's over. He can do literally anything he wants. I'm going to need y'all to continue your therapy <laughs> until, until these uh, self-sabotaging self traumatic wounds <laughs> cease to show up in your narrative anytime I say I have important news. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, or and a three-minute voice note. And you guys are like <laughs> choking like, <laughs> hey, bro, should I even listen to it? <laughs> yeah, you guys are gonna be delivered. I promise. Praise you. God. Yeah, and because and we're not getting an HR department, right? We still do whatever we want. No, <laughs> you can't do whatever you want. But like, we're just walking in relationships. So when when I need to be HR, I just turn into HR real quick, and I'll just turn back into. Regular. And I've seen that. <laughs> it's not okay, and I hope to never see it again. I agree. It was scary when we were at, we were just in Atlanta, and I had to sleep outside of the. Um, <laughs> The hotel and i asked hey can i hitch a ride with you guys to the uber for darius daniels and you said darius daniels, i don't want to see you and um i had to take the atl bus stop while trump was coming through no. to get indicted it was crazy it was wow crazy. this freestyle rant is wild it went for a while that went for a while i didn't know where that was going it was a whole three movies it was it was three movies um so anyway oh yeah oh, so we're, we're gonna re we're gonna recap atlanta but I want I want to talk business first. Now, what I'm what I'm about to tell you is cryptic. Okay? So I'm telling you that up front. Then Tim, why even bring it up? I just want to put this on your radar and as you know, as we get going the next few weeks, I'll let you know more. Um uh but we are we are very close to signing a deal. Um uh there is a um partnership that I am in and uh it looks like we get to 
uh, bring the basement along with um, a few other uh, notable influencers. We get to bring the basement into a platform uh, that is going to literally be the hub for vulnerability um, and for um, what it means to be a d disciple of Jesus walking out everyday life. Listen, I, you know, I've tried to tell y'all before, this is not a discipleship app and, you know, the basement's not a Bible study. We're just living life. You know what I'm saying? And um, the mandate that I had was get as many people to the basement as we could. It didn't even say get as many believers to the basement. Just get as many people to the basement as you could. So we taking like, we taking entrepreneurs, we're, we're taking nurses, doctors, lawyers, athletes, strippers, porn stars, babies, mamas, you know what I'm saying? Stay at home moms, uh, uh, women in Nebraska and women in New Orleans. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like we, 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 we going after men in Compton and men in Caraco. Like, like, like it's the ba get as many people at to the basement as you can is a pretty broad stroke. And so to that end, I know I can't get people uh, down to the basement by myself. And so um, instead of uh, being this platform that God has blessed us with, that's just kind of like in, you know, a um, acquaintanceship with other people that have large platforms, We've just decided, why don't we just all get together? Mm -hmm. Like, why don't we just all link up and form Voltron <laughs> and go get as many people as we can and upset the world? You know what I'm saying? So I'm really excited about that. This, again, that's that's all I can tell you. Like, that's legit all I can tell you. Um, I can't go into more detail than that right now, but I, I need to put it on your radar right now, though. That way, when I start talking about it more specifically, we can, like, get into it, get into it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But I want to drop that little nugget on you now, though, because <laughs> it's coming. It's coming, and I'm excited about it. And uh, Fitman Style in the chat has confirmed uh, it will be better than Pornhub. Hey, man. That's what I'm talking about. You roll over at 2 o'clock in the morning, and you're like, you know what? I know what app I'm going to. Patern, 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 patern. Welcome to the basement. <laughs> That's the new intro. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if that was like season seven's <laughs> intro music? Sean patern, Patrick, patern, get on patern, the patern, patern, patern. Hey, yo. Yo. <laughs> Holla at Sean. Holla at Sean. Because I don't think that little sound clip is like, you know, yeah. Restricted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ooh wee. Ooh wee. <laughs> I see the wheels turning. Oh my God. <laughs> Ooh wee. Let's redeem that noise. Let's redeem that noise. I'll let your boy see if he can tag it to the, but I still need that beat though. Hey y'all, we coming up with a um I'm I'm recording like in the next 10 days or so, uh season seven's uh intro. When I tell you that beat is grimy, <laughs> oh! and the and 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 the way I felt like I needed to be in that pocket, it's slow. It is bass heavy. If you got like a sound system, like for real, for real. If you got like good headphones, that knock is gonna be that knock is gonna be obnoxious. <laughs> Did you get it? Did you get it? Up, knock. No, that was dumb. <laughs> I turned it into a dad joke unnecessarily, but whatever. Um, Tim, people are requesting for you to drop a whole EP. Do you think that'll ever happen at some point in the future? Maybe, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing a lot right now. I'm doing a lot right now, but I'm not doing the most. There's a difference. Yeah. I'm doing a lot right now, but I'm not doing the most. What I'm getting back to is, I can't even, I don't know if I'm getting back. No. I am, I am, I am in a season where I am giving myself permission to express myself fully. Mm. In ministry, 
my assignment as a lead pastor had to dominate. Like that had to be the thing I did. Above all, you don't want to have mixed signals in a space like that because you have a specific assignment that you need to have. And now being on the other side of that, I realized that there, there are so many things that I naturally have done my whole life that I am now being able to fully express without having to worry about, I don't want to send mixed signals, yeah. right? Um, now, I know that um, I stumbled into a few bear traps uh, uh, in the social media space um, with my vulnerability, right? And because people are like, oh, right? That's how I, I that's how I see them in my head when they is it, seizing. Uh, just seizing. They're just having full on foam at the mouths. You know what I'm saying? Rabies. <laughs> 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 Not rabies. So, um, oh man, now now I think they're raccoons. <laughs> Little trash <laughs> Raccoon 909. <laughs> Raccoon 909 out here. So um I'm I'm so like the rapping, right? Like once I got welcome to the basement, yeah. it's safer down here because that hundred flow will leave you on the pavement. And most of y'all like, wait a minute. The stuff that I be thinking is the stuff that Timmy y'all hear Bowley saying, right? Like that's that's in me. That's always been in me. Mm -hmm. But as a lead pastor, it wasn't even like the, the the ninth thing on my mind. I would scratch that itch sometimes, but I couldn't be there. You know what I'm saying? Um, so being there, like to be able to be in that mode now, um, thank you, Lord, for season six. Who would have thought a podcast could be a gift? The pressing, you know, whatever I wrote, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> um and, and lyrically, give a Pharisee fits. All in all, you the one controlling this. So, ooh, the Lord is my shepherd. I can't go skit. So, this new podcast is like a skit, though. A lot of people swinging. I didn't even throw a pitch, though. Like, you, I mean, uh, I love that stuff. And, like, what I just wrote, mm -hmm. knock it. Oh! I mean, I got to just sit in that groove and just... Mm. You want to hit it real quick right now? Nope. Tell them the whole thing without nope. the beat for the Lord? Nope. Amen. It's not happening. Nope. They're going to wait. They're going to ride it out. This might be the longest one, too, because usually I just hit it like like a good eight and go. This is a little bit. It's a little bit, but the beat is slower, so it might just feel longer. Maybe it's the same. But the beat is slower. The beats per minute is slower on this I'm one. I'm here for a 10-minute intro, bro. <laughs> and we'll do a short film on top of it. Jul uh, Julie's background from uh, Columbia. We're we going to do it. We're going to do it. Taylor Swift can do it. We can do it, man. Hey, we're just going to do a, a, a Michael Jackson Smooth Criminal Video is, is a mini movie. You know what Tim, I mean? Quick question. Uh, there's been a very hot debate on the internet about the two people you just said. Is Taylor Swift anywhere in the sphere of where Michael Jackson is? Depends on who you ask. A lot of people have been saying that she's up there. The crowd she brings, the energies, the performance. It's almost Michael Jackson. Whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> crowd she brings, energy. I can go with that. When you say performance, stop. <laughs> Just pump the brakes. Yeah. If there's anybody trying to put Taylor Swift on par with Michael Jackson performance-wise, Just drive up to the mountains and build yourself a cabin and never come down. Like, eat off the land and off the grid. Like, don't be on anything. Like, you post that. You say that. Mm -hmm. You you're convicted with that? I don't ever want to know you. Just just watch this is it. His perfection in every aspect watch of watch rehearsal. Anything. Yes. It, watch him at 5. Yeah. Watch him at 6. What? It watch him any time. What? Yeah. So crowd and energy, is she might be a big draw light. Like, okay, okay. No, 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 no. Man, I only got, I can only downgrade her to crowd. Mm. Yeah. Energy? Are people feigning? I don't think so. When Taylor Swift stands still? That part. 
Michael Jackson jumped from under the stage mm -hmm. onto the stage and just stood there. And people started. <laughs> yep. Yep. And then they fainted. And he just, and he was just standing there. Then this Negro <laughs> went like this. More people fainted. Yes. Are people fainting at Taylor Swift concerts? Nah. They're just trying. I mean, I'm not crying. <laughs> They're just trying. Try, trying to faint. <laughs> They're trying to faint. They're trying to make them suffer. People are putting plastic bags over their heads and going like this. <laughs> And right when they're doing like this, then they just take it off like, nah, nah, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. I'm trying to be a Taylor Swift fan and bring it to Michael Jackson's level, but I want to be conscious. I Somebody might take my AirPods if I faint. Violate my body if I faint. I need to stay awake. Yeah, they're, they're not. They're, no. So, so maybe she's getting crowds. I don't know. Is she selling out Belgium? I, hey, dog. I don't even know if I can give her a crowd. Crowd where? Crowd in America? Not mm. crowd in the world? Mm. Michael Jackson was getting all kind of allegations uh, 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 lobbed against him in the U.S. This dude just went doot, 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 straight to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga went straight to Belarus and was like, Annie, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. This live, okay, this live might be different, y'all. I don't even know. I am here for it. This is funny to me. Oh, Lord have mercy. All right, so... uh. All right, so I'm getting into every so I'm 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 the full expression of myself, right? So the rapping, uh, I'm starting to do. I'm going to start doing stand up again. I'm already writing, and um, I'll probably start performing later this year, um, and definitely next year. And uh, uh, hey, y'all, let me say this: the homie Kev on stage, Kev on stage. Hold on, let me let me pull up. Uh, let me pull it up because I want I want to make sure. I get I get all the deets. This Sunday, this Sunday, September 3rd, the Ball Brothers Tour featuring Tony Baker and Kev on stage. He is going to be at the Dallas Majestic Theater Thursday. They're doing a show, 7.30 to 9. If that show ain't sold out, shame on y'all. That boy has been grinding him and Tony Baker. If you don't know who Tony Baker is, hilarious comedian, um, has gone through some tragedy. Um, uh, but if you've, if you've seen any of his voiceovers that he does for animals, like animal clips and stuff like that, it is literally pee on yourself funny. So they are, they are doing this tour. Um, they've been selling out a lot of cities, but they added a, they added a stop back in Dallas. They were already in Dallas and I missed them. And they added a stop back in Dallas this September uh, 3rd. And so if you're in the DFW Metroplex or you a quick drive out, maybe you over there in Shreveport or something like that, that's close enough. Get in the car mm -hmm. and, um, you know, stay at a La Quinta or something. Buy your tickets. Come through. It's going to be amazing. Um, and I'm just I'm just saying this for the homies. Like, like I'm not I'm, I'm not making no appearance. In, like, I'm going to the show to support. Like, I bought tickets. Like, I didn't get no hook up and I'm going to be backstage chilling with them or nothing like that. I'm just telling you, I love these guys. I support them. They're funny. Um, and I think you should be there. So anyway, um, but I'm going to start doing, yeah. So I started writing again. I'm going to start doing stand up again. I did stand up in my early twenties for two years, loved it. And again, the call, right? The, the, the ministry, the call of ministry and th that assignment is what I felt like I was supposed to be doing. Humor has always been a large part of um, how I present the gospel. Um, I refer to it as cherry-flavored NyQuil. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. And so when you're telling people the truth about Jesus Christ, and especially the way I'm wired, like I'm wired to tell people to eat his flesh, drink his blood, and die. Right? That is my Jesus message. Like, crucify your flesh. Die. You know what I mean? take take the L, right? Like, take him as Lord and Savior. You know what I mean? You, you just leaving right now? That's it? You're done. Okay, Sammy. I mean, 
But don't say I fired you, though. <laughs> Sammy just quit in the middle of the pod. Like, you know what? I hate it. I hate all of this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, go let you finish, but I, I got stuff for you. You got stuff for me? Yeah. Oh, snap. Okay, this is awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. Okay, so anyway, um, you're just getting set up. See, see, the, it's the movement. I didn't know what was happening. Okay. All right, all right. So, um, so, so we, so yeah. So, I'm doing comedy. I'm, I'm right now. Um, I'm gonna start performing. I'm not telling nobody where I'm performing. Cause listen, man. Material is like you don't. Ma material is mercurial bars. You don't know what's good or not until you get in front of that crowd. So I don't want y'all showing up and then, you know, my stuff sucks and. You know what? I don't care. Y'all just show up. If you don't like it, you ain't got to like it. You know what I'm saying? I might not like it. I just, we just got to figure out what works. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I, I do look forward to opening for a few of my friends. I do look forward to just getting back in that rhythm because, again, humor is a, a large part. I had humor before I had Jesus. Um, the, 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 my, first coping, blah, 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 my first coping mechanism with uh my my sexual trauma was humor i had humor be be before i even got exposed to pornography so um humor has always been with me and um i like to view the world through a lens where i can bring some levity to it there there's a lot of serious stuff in the world and i, I i'm not trying to be irreverent about uh, serious stuff in the world, but I also believe levity helps us as human beings to digest it. And so um, I look forward to making you laugh or ch or at least attempting to. You know what? Laughter is too... That's... That's too daunting. I'm not... I'm not going after laughs. I'm going after chuckles. Let's lower the bar. Who... who, who do, uh, no, nobody has time to... I don't have time for that level of pressure. I'm not trying to make people laugh. I'm just going to try to make them chuckle. If I can make them chuckle, we'll go with that. So I hear uh, vacuum cleaners. Our, our team they're is cleaning downstairs. Oh, yeah, they're cleaning. Okay, no worries. <laughs> they haven't been here in like probably two months. Is it super distracting? I don't care. No, no, no. It's not, it's not distracting. I just heard them. Uh, Y'all at my house. What, what are we talking about? Like we're at we're at my house. So, um, so I'm yeah. So the rapping is there, and then I'm gonna be I'm gonna start doing comedy. That's there. Um, skits. That's gonna be there. Um, I'm getting an echo in my in my ears. I'm getting feedback. Like I'm, I'm hearing myself. Like I don't know what you clicked, but it was going. Now it's going. So, um, uh, that's that. I'm trying to think of what else. I'm making shoes for y'all. They'll actually be here today. I don't think they're going to be here by the time this pod is over, though. We'll take some pictures of them. Ladies, I made you your own kicks. I know I had them great press Bs, and it was like, what about the ladies? I made you some, I made you some kicks. I made you your own press Bs. They fire, too. I can't wait to hold them in hand, get a picture of them. I think I got sizes 5 through 11. So whether you got a little tiny foot, like Juliana, or you got a big old foot because you play basketball or something, or you're you're a kickball champion, I don't know what you do. I, I can't. I don't know. Kickball champion? I don't know. You're one, of your, you're, one, you're one of the last descendants of ANAC. I'm not sure. I, I'm, not in your, I'm not in your genealogy. I don't know what your 23 and me chromosome DNA test is. All I know is... I went five through eleven, and then those great press Bs, um, we gave away the nines, but we got ten through fourteen, I think, to give away. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So um once we take pictures of those, we'll get them out. And whoever got a size, you know, we pick them, we pick you at random. So don't, you know, you you can leave a long comment about, you know what, my when my grandmother prayed over me she said i was gonna get tennis shoes and i believe this is confirmation to it it might and then your grandma might be wrong or your your grandma might be right but it ain't us so um making them kicks putting them kicks out and yeah so i'm doing a lot but i'm not doing the most i'm doing everything that i feel like i was i was put on the earth to communicate 
And so I want to communicate in all those different lanes. Oh, I'll tell you the last one. I will also start doing uh, um, uh, corporate events next year as well. I'm taking the message of vulnerability to corporations. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Nike, you know what I'm saying? All y'all. Uh, Facebook, FUBU. Why did I say FUBU? <laughs> I said Facebook and I saw FB, so then I was just like, FUBU. Jinko Jeans. Jinko Jeans. <laughs> Carl Kanai, we coming for you. Okay, Swiss Shoes. Corporate event. Not <laughs> this. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah, so, yeah, again, I'm doing a lot, but I'm not doing the most. I just want to maximize all, all the ways God has given me to communicate. So an EP is not off the table. S super long answer. I think it was appropriate. Super long answer. But a lot um, of details in there. There was a lot of details. I gave I gave y'all some tea. Y'all should drink that tea. I put a little oat milk in there for you, swirled it around. Y'all should be good. All right. What what, what what's over All right, here? Bud, so uh our friend Shannon at Yellow Bike Coffee Company. Oh, I remember this woman. Sent has some t shirts. Get out of here. These t shirts say uh creativity creates context. Curiosity. Oh, creates curiosity. My bad. Oh, Shannon, you getting up? Yeah. Is that in there? That's good. Shannon with the creativity. So she sent some t-shirts and this is a dope. bag of coffee. <gasps> a bag of coffee. Yeah. I know exactly who up. I'm giving this to. It's good. Oh, too. it's oh. Ooh. I don't drink coffee, but I like smelling it. Mm -hmm. That smells good. It'll wake you up. Look upstream. Who who these have these coffee beans been through somebody's booty or something? I don't think so. And that's somebody. Not, not the monkeys. The monkeys' booties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to say like a person. Yeah. Because that would be. I've seen bucket list. That that. Would, somebody has passing coffee beans through their butt as a bucket list. No no no. There's a Praise movie God. called Bucket List. Lord Jesus. With Morgan Freeman. Okay, fam. And the Lord made a way. Lord, I'm a literalist. You. You gotta, you gotta end your sentences better. <laughs> I have no idea. That sounded too close to this. So these are whole beans, and these come from East Africa, Tanzania. Let's go, Tanzania. That's what I'm talking about. This is great. Mineral-rich volcanic soil. Okay, this is fantastic. Gucci. Okay. So thank you so much, Shannon. We appreciate you. Like we are so happy about this. This is awesome. East, look, ain't this a, ain't this a trip? These bees come from Karuto, uh, 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 Karatu, grown in Karatu, Tanzania. I hope I'm saying that right. Karat. Why am I? My Spanish accent that I'm learning is making me want to say put it in a Karatu. Karatu, I think I'm <laughs> Karatu, Tanzania, to Duluth, Minnesota. Who would have thunketh? <laughs> right? Duluth. Duluth, Minnesota, of all places. East Africa to Duluth, Minnesota. You're talking about a small world. Gosh. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Shannon. I really appreciate you. Um, we love you. Thank you for listening. Is there more? Yes, so uh, this is just like our a, homie Troy, who was in Japan whenever he sent this stuff. By yep, the way, yep, he sent you this Brooklyn hat. Ooh, and with those oh, this hat is authentic, authentic. Comes these shoes, which mm -hmm. I'll wait till you open them to tell you what they are. What? All right, so got this hat. That's dope. All right, and then Yaga. What? So these are uh, limited edition Jackie Robinson Nikes. And if you read the laces, they say change the world. Kit <laughs> out. Yo. He sent me a picture of these things. I said, bro, he's going to love these. 1956 change the world laces Brooklyn Dodgers. Look at the sole on that shoe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because it's baseball, look at the stripe. Yes. Look at the 42. Look at the detail on these joints. And then the stripe on the back. 
You right, Noah. Shoo. Shoo. Look at the bottom of that shoe. I feel like I'm doing one of those um those unboxing yeah. podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey guys, so I got the new <laughs> Jackie Robinson limited edition Brooklyn Dodgers. Check out the out. box, you know. The box didn't come in uh, tip-top shape, but the shoe, though. <laughs> the shoe, though. Look at the inside, the detail on the inside. Wow. There's wow. written on the inside of it. Yeah, it? there is. Oh, wow. But I'm I'm man, this is just awesome. Thank you. Who gave us this? His name's Troy. Troy, you yeah. what are who are you, bro? And then, thank you, bro. Last but not and least. And then there's these more. Are, these are YouTube Nikes. What? Now these are too big for you. They're like size twelves. So if we wanted to give these away, he said we can give them away or we could just display them. But they what? are YouTube uh Who is this dude? He's a dweller, bro. A genuine dweller. I'll let you hold this. Okay. I'll we trade. That. I put your sky. Wow. Yo. And this is a legit ones. YouTube with KD on it. Yeah. Yeah, this is crazy. I didn't. What? <laughs> Nike has a YouTube show? Apparently, I've never seen them before. Bro, this is wild. Look at that. Video, this little tag on the back, yeah. right on this side says, video will play after ad. <laughs> and on this side, it says, skip ad. That's amazing. Is this not wild? <laughs> this is crazy. So just Yo. little gifts from, uh, from our dwellers, man. They want to say they love you. I love y'all back, man. I love y'all back. Thank you so much. This is amazing. And be listen, you know we're givers around here. What size again did you say this was? Um, those are either elevens or twelves. All right, cool. Let well, let's just find out. Oh, th these are authentic Nikes, I can tell. I mess with enough of them. This is a US 12. This is a US 12. So here's what I'm gonna do. Since these are YouTubes and we're live right now on YouTube, then I think it's only appropriate that somebody in the chat I love it. that wears a size 12 gets the YouTubes yes, sir. as a gift. So I don't know who that is right now. First name I see says uh, Tommy Cavalier Jr. says I'm a size 12. Tommy Cavalier Jr. said that? Yes, sir. Where Tommy at? He's at the top. That's just the first name I saw. Yo, this dude, um, Czar? Yeah. Uncle F? First of all, he gave a very generous donation. I really appreciate that. Um, 350 bucks. Like, thank you. That's awesome. Um, but he says, my name is Evan. Well, it says the name is Evan. Um, I have been struggling with sexual sin and impurity since 13. And I have no one I trust to tell this to or who can help me. I also want to know... Did you ever feel nothing after committing these acts? Mm. So I want to say first, uh, I don't know to call you Uncle F or Czar. Uh, I'll say Czar. First, Czar, I just want you to know I love you. And thank you so much I for... Czar is the uh, currency. C-A-R. Oh, oh, my bad. No problem. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you so much. 350 Czar. Okay, I don't know what that is, but it doesn't matter. Thank you for your generosity. Um, Uncle F. Okay, so thank you so much. Uncle F, I love you. And uh, the, fact, the fact that you would donate anything is already just generous. But I want to thank you for, your, for the gift of your vulnerability. You literally said you, you feel like you don't have anyone that you could trust, yet 
you ask this question in a chat that has 900 people in it. Mm -hmm. What that lets me know is that you feel safe here. What that lets me know is that you feel seen here. You feel heard here. You want to be known here. You feel like you can be loved here. And so I just want you to know that I'm proud of you. And um, I completely understand uh, and can identify with your struggle. Um, I got exposed to pornography at the age of 12. And it was a battle, you know, through the rest of my teens, late teens, into my 20s. Um, and then it has to be maintained since then. So I don't want to make it seem like it just disappeared. It has not disappeared. Um, I just have more tools uh, and much better tools to be able to navigate it, fight it, turn the lights on, be accountable, open my mouth, allow the light to come in so that the darkness can shrink the temptation, the stronghold, the urge. Um, uh, to answer your question, prior to giving my life to Jesus, I didn't feel any anything after committing these acts. You know, sexual sin and impurity was very enjoyable to me. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, uh, was it good for me? It was not good for me, but I enjoyed it. And um, it's only when I gave my life to Jesus uh, did I that I stop enjoying it. And I only stopped enjoying it because he didn't enjoy it. So it wasn't like my flesh all of a sudden was like, oh, we're serving Jesus now. I guess we don't like this anymore. Now, my flesh still loved it. Um, but my conscience didn't. My soul didn't. My mind didn't. The conviction of the Holy Spirit was there. And that's what started to make me turn. Because that's all repent means, remember. Repent means to change your mind about the way you think about something. Right? So repentance is not saying, I'm sorry. It's about changing your mind about the way you think about something. When you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ and you repent, you are changing your mind based on his commandments. And so I just want to encourage you that you've already made a significant step. And I want to encourage you that if you can't find somebody that you can trust, I want you to be brave enough to find somebody that you can put your faith in. Right? I don't believe in walking up to people and saying, hey, trust me. Trust has to be earned. Trust is built over time. But we can place our faith in people. You've placed your faith in this community. I just need you to go a step further. And whether that is with somebody that you know, or maybe it's a session that you set up with a therapist or a counselor, be brave enough uh, to make the next step because the next step is going to be your best step. Love you, bro, and thank you so much for um, asking that question. Um, back to these shoes. You see how I can jump straight in and out of that? Yes, sir. Because I love it. It's like double Dutch. Um, so I got a few names if you want. Mm -mm, no, y'all pick it. Y'all already, y'all always pick a name. So I'm not. You ain't gonna get. You ain't gonna get me in trouble. They're gonna be mad at you. No problem. First name I saw was Tommy Cavalier. So let's go with Tommy. Um, Julie, can we get his details? Awesome. Tommy Cavalier, I need you to connect with Juliana on um IG or or TikTok or something whatever we're on and or on YouTube I I well I just yeah what I don't I know you don't we don't need your address in the chat no don't do that just your social <laughs> <laughs> just your routing number and your bank account <laughs> number so that we can just send you an important mailer to let you know that your car's extended warranty has expired. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. So his name is Tyler? Tommy. Tommy. Tommy about to get these. YouTube. Dude, I didn't even know YouTube had a sneak, fam. This is. They're pretty wild. This is wild, fam. This is wild. All right, man. So when you get them, I always encourage people, take a pic with them on or in hand or something. Let us know you got them. I'm still waiting for them first two people that got them first two sneaks to have they sent anything? Oh yeah, just taking. Yeah, I'm I'm overnighting stuff to y'all, and y'all just taking them and just and and ain't gonna even say thank you. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. Once we give it away, it's yours. We we ain't we ain't doing no manipulative stuff. So you can take a picture. You cannot take a picture. It's all good. We would just love to see it. And man, 
Can this shirt be any more true? Right. <laughs> Curiosity creates context. And it's in yellow as well. Come on now. Come on now. We good. We good. We out here. All right. So let me let me um let me tell you what I want to do. Right. I, I I told you that I'm about to I'm about to hit up season seven, um and go go record this. But here's what I want to do, and I want to tell y'all in enough time. A lot of y'all are creative. A lot a lot of y'all can rap. A lot of y'all can produce. A lot of y'all can sing. Y'all have gifts. Y'all have talents, and it's a, and it's a beautiful thing. This we're a community. We're a community that continues to grow. Here's the thing, y'all. I'm tired of making these intros. I'm ready for one of our dwellers to come through hey, dude. with an intro. So I'm putting it out there. For little, who, little open verse. Little open verse. Like you can it could be an original. We can give them a beat, whatever. But I, I'm looking for I'm 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 recording season seven, but I'm telling y'all early enough, I'm looking for a season eight intro. What if you do just the chorus? You do the chorus. I ain't and doing they nothing. Do, and they nope. do an open verse before it? Uh -uh, no? no okay. I ain't doing nothing. Sorry, I'm fired. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want I want to hear from these dwellers. I want them to come up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and just submit it. And I don't care what genre it is. It could be a gospel vibe. It could be a soulish vibe. It could be... It could be hard rock for all I care. I don't really care. Heavy metal intro would go crazy. It would go dummy. Mosh if, pit hitter. If it's dope. <laughs> if it's dope, though. Metallica uh, X The Basement is going crazy. <laughs> I'm with it. So um, there it is. Y'all y'all down with that? I need to jump in the chat for that one. I want to know. I oh, am going curious. Crazy. I am curious. It's in the beat. <laughs> yeah. Karina said, I'm a boxer. Someone make a sick beat and I'll record a little boxing montage to represent us beating down these walls and releasing vulnerability. Let's go, Karina! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about! That's dope! Karina Verbitsky. Let's go, Karina! I want to see you beat things up <laughs> and let it represent that. She's like, she like somebody make a sick beat. Get Karina... Hey, asking you shall receive. Somebody get Karina a beat so she can make a montage. She talking about doing video production. Get her a beat so we can put that on our reel. Are you kidding me? Hey, what if we do this for you, Karina? How about how about um how about my 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 season seven intro? You make a little montage to that of you boxing. I love. I'm I'm with these collabs. Yeah, let's go. Maybe, maybe, maybe as soon as I record season seven, we get you that music, and then you can go make a montage off that. Let me know if you with that. How let me? Crystal wants to know if you're open to singers. I, absolutely, yeah, I said that already. Crystal Drake, come on through here. I can already see by your little pick. I haven't even. I can't even zoom in on that. I be zooming in on people's picks. Yeah, you already got that vibe. You an artist, faux show. I see you with that her and them glasses and them hoops. Let's go. I'm with it, Crystal Love. Let's giddy. Animation? Yes, Mouse. All the creativity. Mm -hmm. Bring it. Spoken word? Yes, Veronica. Bring it. I'm with it. Uh, somebody said there's there, there's so many theological positions that, that it creates confusion. How do you navigate that? Joshua Trot. Good question, Josh. So here's what I'd like to tell you, dear brother. There are, there are so many theological positions. Uh, the way that I like to uh, navigate them is um, to deal with what I call the essentials first. Do we agree that Jesus Christ is Lord? Uh, we're talking about like the, 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 the very tenets of the faith. Is Jesus Christ Lord and Savior? Do you believe that God sent his son to earth, that he was born of a virgin, that he lived a sinless life, and that he was crucified in our stead, beaten, bruised, bloodied, to die for our sins. A lot of, a lot of people are trying to even change that theology, uh, that theology now that God wouldn't be mean to his son. 
that literally like this. Like, no, we don't believe that God put all his wrath on his own son. They don't even believe that. Um, but Jesus died a substitutionary death for our sins that we should have died for so that there would be a way that we, we could be reconnected to God as father and creator. We believe that he was in a grave for three days, that he rose again on the third day with all power in his hand, and that he ascended back into heaven. His physical body ascended back into heaven. His resurrected physical body ascended back into heaven. He is right now seated at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come back to get us. That is basic salvation right there. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. These are basic tenets of the faith. That's a non-negotiable. If you don't agree with that, there's nothing else for us to talk about. Now, all these other theological positions, do you baptize with water? Do you sprinkle on somebody's head? Do you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Do you baptize in the name of Jesus? Do you baptize in Jesus' name? Are you Baptist? Are you Kojic? Are you Church of God? Are you Church of God in Christ? Are you Lutheran? Are you Episcopalian? Are you Pentecostal? Are you Charismatic? Whatever the case is, all of those different, th those are all expressions. I, I, I refer to them as accents. Like when I go to New York, I can pick up on a New York accent. That, that might have been disrespectful to New Yorkers just now. But a New York accent is very, very distinctive. You just know that they're from that part of the country. Cali has a different cadence and a different accent. Minnesota has a little pop on their accent. New Orleans, down there, baby. They got a, I know where people are just by the way they talk. I know people's theology by the way they talk. It's an accent to me. I hear a certain person talk about their relationship with Jesus and their belief system, I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 you got that Baptist accent. Oh, you got that Southern Baptist accent. You got that Church of God in Christ accent. You got that Church of God Tennessee accent. Oh, you got that Church of God Anderson accent. Oh, you got that Episcopalian accent. You got that Presbyterian accent. You got that Anglican accent. You got that Catholic accent. These are all accents. I've literally traveled all around the world and I've preached in the majority of the accents that I just mentioned, literally. Um, it's just an accent to me. But they believe Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. And that is the, that is the very foundation of the faith to me. And so um, the people that like to argue within whose accent is better, leave them alone. Joshua? I'm telling you right now, if you want to preserve your sanity and you want to sleep good at night and not be in nobody's comment section, getting pissed off and raging, don't fall in love with the accent because it's just an accent. It would be foolish for a Californian to, and, and a New Yorker to get into it over accent. they both Americans. <laughs> a Baptist guy and a Pentecostal guy might not agree, but they both in the kingdom. They just got different accents. They approached God and learned about God a different way, from a different road, from a different street. So never let it be about the accent, man. Never let it be about the accent. Are you in the kingdom? That's what I want to know. Are you in the kingdom? Do you believe Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior? I don't care if you speak in tongues or not. I do. But I don't care if you do or not. I'm not going to make that. That's a secondary issue, man. That's a secondary issue. Some people think it's primary. Okay, but there's a whole lot of people faithful to God who have never shallowed a lot in their life. They love Jesus. And I know a lot of people that have shallowed a lot and they mean as hell. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I'm not going to ever get into it about the accents. The accents are just that. They're accents. But are we from the same kingdom? That's what I want to know. So I hope that answers that question for you. It's good stuff. Uh, Taylor asks, for us baby Christians that are trying to live a more Christian life where I'm honoring him better, uh, I come from a Catholic background that was very strict. Mm. How do how do we discern what is and isn't sin? Mm. The Bible's clear on it. 
The Bible is very, very clear on what is and what is not sin. Like, honestly. Um, and so I would say for a new Christian, you need to read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Just read it. You ain't got to understand it. Mm -hmm. Just read it. And as you're reading it, there's going to be some stuff that the Holy Spirit tugs at, digs in on, convicts you about, makes you say, hmm, to, I promise you, from Genesis to Revelation, it's going to highlight a whole bunch of stuff. Well, then you might say, well, there's a lot of stuff uh, in the Bible um, that is clear, but there's a lot more that isn't clear. The nuanced stuff, let's have conversations about. Mm -hmm. I remember, um, uh, I'll never forget this as long as I live. I was at a, uh, I was a young adult pastor at Potter's House. And I did Q&A, just like we're doing now. I did Q&A, no question off limits, for two weeks in a row. And um, this girl raised her hand and she was like, cohabitation is not in the Bible. So, like, why, why do people think that's a sin? So I said, yeah, just go ahead and keep living with your boyfriend. And I moved on to the next question. Everybody was like... <laughs> It was dead. Like, they were, like, they were shocked. Yeah. So I, I, I do Q&A for about 20 minutes, and then I come back to the girl. And I said, let, let me tell you why uh, I just told you to go ahead and live with your boyfriend. Because if every single thing has to be spelled out for you, you're going to always find a loophole hmm. to do what you want to do. No, the word cohabitation is not in the Bible. The phrase cohabitation is a sin. Thou shalt not cohabitate. But you shouldn't be having premarital sex. And cohabitation frustrates a couple who is not married trying to be celibate. Yeah. Anybody, any, does anybody want to tell me right now I can live with my boyfriend or girlfriend as a believer in Jesus Christ every day and we're not going to bone each other. Oh, I've elevated above that, Tim. He sleeps in his room and I sleep in mine. Okay. Let's downgrade. Two more nuance. What is the perception giving to your friends and family in that scenario? And do you want that witness to be something that you have to explain over and over and over again? Look, I'm trying to lead by example. I told y'all I stopped using strong language, not because I thought it was sinful, but because of the sideways energy it's giving people I have relationship with in the body of Christ that I still preach for. Some stuff just ain't a good look. Now, I didn't have that, I didn't have that thought prior to all this stuff wafting up. But once it wafted up, I'm like, nah, man, it's bigger than that. I'm never gonna make it about me in that regard. So I I think that the Bible is very, very clear on what is sin, and then where is nuance, let's have a conversation. I'm down to have a conversation with nuance. I, I remember uh, we was in a QA. and uh, I, I don't know why I distinctly remember this, but this was during live ember. Um, we, I, I don't know why I just remember this vividly, but we did, we were doing a QA, and a and somebody asked, is masturbation a sin um, if you're not watching porn? And my answer was the Bible's silent on that, so I'm not going to say nothing because I don't see nothing in the Bible that deals with that. Now, guess what happened in, in, in the chat? The Jesus police deputized themselves so fast. It's a sin, it's a sin, it's a sin, it's a sin, it's a sin. And I'm like, I'm a literalist. This person said, is masturbation not attached to pornography or lusting after somebody a sin? I don't know. See, we're too afraid to say I don't know. We got to be experts on everything. 
this is the beautiful thing I love about Q&A. I ain't got to know every answer. Y'all could pitch me something. I'll be like, I don't, I, it's above me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's beyond me, fam. You got to go ask somebody else. You better not ask me. So, so that question was very interesting to me. I took it at face value. Of course, you can get into nuances of, are you going to be even around? How do you even arouse yourself if you ain't thinking about something? I don't know. I don't know. Then, are you getting addicted to it? Is this something that you become dependent on? Is this the only way you can go to sleep? Is this the only way you can wake up? Is this the only way you relieve stress? You don't want to be addicted to nothing. Let's just say it wasn't a sin at all. You don't, you just going to rub one out every time you get stressed? I'll be back. I'm going to the restroom. I'm going to buy the, 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 the Costco pack of lotion. I'm going to need it for what I'm going through. Every woman is like, I have a magic wand. And I'll be back in three hours. Right? Like, like <laughs> I, 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 I want to be able to have conversations about everything. There's nothing off limits in the basement. Also, let's, let's be prepared. And I know that th this person that asked the question is a neophyte. Um, but but let's let's be prepared to hold tension. You're a new believer. You want to know what sin is? Read the Bible directly through. It's going to jump out at you loud and clear. And where there are those nuances or those gray areas, let's have conversations about them. And let's not be afraid to have those conversations about them. We had somebody send in an email, which is kind of the move for us for the context side um, so that they can just have a way longer paragraph to throw in. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna say your name wrong, so I'll just say uh, Miss Moore. Mm -hmm. um, I'm 26 years old. I'm newly married. My husband um, uh, brought a kid from a previous relationship into this relationship. He is seven years old. Due to the circumstances, I was... Um, I was brought into as I was brought into as a kid and find it hard for me to love on him physically and emotionally. Could you give me guidance in this area? Context: I was adopted at the age of two years old uh, from my mom, from my aunt, mom's sister, because uh, my dad molested my sister. My aunt was a tough love type of person, no hugs, kisses, or I love you, or I love yous. It has been hard showing. Uh, um, loving emotions toward people all of my life. It's been hard for me to hug people, et cetera. Yeah. Well, um, what's her name or what should we call her? Uh, Miss Moore or uh, Aaliyah. I just don't want to say her first name wrong. It's spelled different. Okay, not a problem. Um, can you read the first part again? Yep. I, I, I need to see it. I'm 26 years old. I'm newly married. My husband um, brought a kid from a previous relationship into the relationship. He is seven years old, and due to the circumstances... Um, I was brought into as a kid to find it's hard for me to got love it. on him physically. And I got it. So um, I have a lot of empathy for you. Um, it is hard to give something you didn't get. It's very hard to give something that you didn't get. And what I don't want you to do is to give something that you didn't get from the wrong place. You might be doing the right thing. Um but you might not have the right approach. So um, where you are right now, I love the honesty. It's so refreshing. Like your honesty is so refreshing. My encouragement to you is to um, make it very, very clear to both your husband and this child that you love them both and that you are working on you in this area. Because um, if... I don't, again, I don't want you to give something that you didn't get because you'll give it, but it won't have the right, it won't be coming from the right source. I want to, I want to make sure I say this right. If you give something that you did not get, you'll be giving it, but it won't be coming from the right source. You don't want to give something out of your brokenness. You don't want to give something out of your pain. You want to give it out of your restoration. Now, I'm not saying don't lean into it, don't try. Like, hey, I'll, announcement, hubby and child. Um... I'm not restored in this area, therefore you won't receive any affection. 
where you can lean into it appropriately, lean into it. Um, but then go to work on yourself. Go to work on yourself. Dig into your own abandonment issues around your adoption. Um, the the safety um, that you did not receive from your father. Um, he abused your sister. You were definitely next. You got out of that environment, but you go into an environment with your aunt, and it's not a loving environment. She's a tough love woman. She's doing the best she can as well. Who knows what happened to auntie? And so you've been left with these pieces, and I don't, I don't believe you should be trying to put these pieces together alone. We are huge proponents down here in the basement on therapy and on uh, counseling for a reason. Because after all that prayer and after these breakthroughs that the Holy Spirit can give to our soul, we got stuff trapped in our body and our neural system. We got stuff trapped in our mind. Our brain's been formed a certain way. And so you want to be able to give out of a, a place of healing. And so I just want to, I want to commend you for even broaching the subject, but I also want to encourage you to do your work, lean into doing your work. You, there is a better version of you. You haven't even met her yet. Your husband hasn't met her yet. That child is going to have the best step mommy ever. But you're not doing this for that child and you're not doing this for your husband. You owe yourself this freedom. You owe yourself this restoration. You owe yourself this liberty. I actually change. I, the, I'm not going to, I can't even say it like I was smart. I found, um, I found out about these Terry Cloth shirts and went wild. I, I switched my whole wardrobe in three weeks. Uh, tops, bottoms, and shoes. But I, my whole wardrobe tops now are just filled with Terry Cloth shirts. And they're, they're so soft. And, um, I just love the material, love the, 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 the way they're made. Anyway, long story short. You know the unintended consequence of these Terry Cloth shirts? I'm already one of the best hug givers on the planet. I promise you right now, I don't boast in much. But I'm one of the best hug givers on the entire planet. Getting hugs now with this, these type of shirts on, ooh, I just elevated the hug. Because it's already a, a soft texture and it's soothing. And so, like, like these hugs obviously don't last long. It ain't like I'm slow dancing with people I hug and stuff. Uh, it ain't that type of feel. <laughs> but people need hugs even, e even when they don't know it. And, and when, I, when I was the lead pastor of Embassy City... Uh, we didn't have like meet and greet, turn around and say hi to your neighbor. We had hug time. It's like a five minute hug time. Like, like leave your whole row and your seat and your section and go hug people for five minutes. People he need hugs. Uh, it's not even that they want them. They need them. They don't even know they need them. It, there, there, is, there is something in, intrinsic that you say to somebody when you come to them like this. What you're saying is I am open what you're expressing is, I am safe. What you're also saying is, I accept all of you into my space. You don't have to lead, you don't have to bring part of you here. A hug says, I embrace all of you. I might not even agree with all of you, but I embrace everything that comes with you, good, bad, and ugly. A handshake says, I, I agree to dialogue, work with you, do something with you. A hug, it's just, ooh, there's a whole, I could do a whole sermon off a hug. So anyway, um, I hope that's very, very helpful for her. I, I just feel, I feel like, um, and y'all some brave people. Ooh, y'all basement people. You can't come down here if you ain't brave. Because, man, it's, I, I, I had to do a hard workout today. And the last exercise I did, I hated it. And so um, I don't like hating stuff because the self-talk you, you give yourself when you hate something just diminishes what you have to do or who you have to interact with. So I'm sitting there. Where's my water bottle? Is my water bottle up here? I think I brought it. 
so so I had to do this workout and I hated it. And I said, I actually said out loud, I hate this workout. And then I'm like, I can't hate this workout. I can't tell I can't tell myself this. I'll I'll never get done with it. So I said, um, I strongly dislike this workout. And then I said, I don't prefer this workout. And then I said, preferences and prerequisites are two different things. You don't always get to do what you prefer to do, but you always have to do what you are pre-required to do. And that's what prerequisite means. And so, um, yeah, preferences and prerequisites are two different things. So don't don't choose the easy way out. Choose the hard way out. Do your work, girl. Don't you you, you are not a victim. I want to say that before before I move on to anything else. You are not a victim. I promise you, you're not. You ain't a victim. You can be a victor. You can be victorious in this. We got the story. Now let God get the glory. Do your work. Do your work. Glory's on the other side of that work. You want to keep going with some of the questions coming in? Mm -hmm. Easy. All right. We have one from Ivy. Uh, Hello, Tim, Hector, Sam, and Julie. Is it okay to stay away from the church for some time, or should one uh, go and continue serving even when one is not in a good mental state? Context, I committed fornication from a place of deception because my dad was not present in my life, so it was a subconscious way of me filling that gap. Read it again. Hello, Tim, uh, Hector, Sam, and Julian. Is it okay for me to step away from the church for some time, or should one um, continue serving even when one is not in a good mental state? Context, I committed fornication uh, from a place of deception because my dad was not present in my life, so it was a subconscious way of filling that gap. All right, so let's separate a couple of things. Let's separate you going to church from serving. Yep. That's the first thing I want to separate. That's why I, had to, I, had, I need to see it. We got to separate you going to church from serving. You've conflated the two. And you're probably in a culture that is big on serving. Um, so you may need to step back from serving at this church for this season. Um, I'm, gr- I'm grateful you, you were able to, to discover the why you stepped into fornication. I love it. I love the fact that you use the word fornication, <laughs> right? Um, I, so, so I'm grateful that you understood the why behind the fornication. That's really, really good to know. The people that's just out there fornicating, right, and don't 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 even know why they're doing it. it they're they're more dangerous. But but your why is very very informative. So so um, let's separate you serving in church from being a part of the local community. What I would say is if you, if you've been serving as a volunteer in this church, I'm making a a couple of assumptions here, but if you've been serving as a volunteer in this church, my um, advice would be to step down from serving and to just attend church, attend the service you're most comfortable with. If it's one or two service, three services, whatever you got at your church. Um, If, you stepping down from serving means that there's a lot of people that are going to be nosy or, you know, inquiring as to why, oh, you're not serving. I don't know if you're a worship leader. I don't know if you work production, guest services. I don't know where you work, right, and where you serve. But if you serve in a very prominent area, that's high visibility, what you may want to do is just uh, stay home and watch online. Still be still be connected, but just watch online um, because I want you to be safe. I don't want you asking a bunch of answering a bunch of questions about why you step down because that is a private matter, especially if you're the one that's calling your own foul and it's not a leader that came to you and said, hey, I found out that you was having sex with somebody. So um, my encouragement to you is to step down from serving and you can still attend, but if you're in a very high visible um, area of service, 
it may be good to stay home, watch online. Uh, don't punish yourself. Mm-hmm. If you're doing it to reset, recap, because it, it, look, it may not just be because you, you had some father issues. It may be because you was working so hard for the church and you just got run down. And that, along with maybe some dad issues, led to you having sex. But there's there's always something that triggers it. And so I, if it, it sounds like you you're you're doing a good job of being self-aware, but I just want you to be safe. And the church can be a safe place if you know how to navigate it. So I hope that helps. I've um, got a question from Huli. What would you like to order for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> Juliana's like, you ain't going you going you going to stop ignoring <laughs> <laughs> I asked you before this pod started and you still ain't answered me. That's really funny. Juliana, I love you. Okay. Um, all right, cool. We got Preston's information. Juli, you are. Can I just celebrate you real yes. quick? You are the. You. Listen, I know that God has his hand on you and you'll probably get married and go evangelize. Rwanda or something <laughs> one day. But I'm telling you, I don't want nobody else as my social media manager. You, I just love you. You literally make my life easy. I just, huh? Girl, please. It's an honor to have you. Oh, my God. You just make my life easy. Oh, you make my life easy. Okay, so where are we, are you asking me where, I, where am I? Where do I want to eat some food from? And it's wherever you want food from. So where y'all? Um, but there are they still getting chipotle? Okay, I know I said it wrong. Y'all hush. Um, uh, that that's how my kids used to pronounce it when they were young. And boss man, if you want, uh, just for your belly and to help with the workout, we could do a little McDonald's run or Jack in the Box or Hungry Jacks from Australia. The the my my digestive system would be so angry with me. <laughs> It would be raging mad at me. Juliana, I today, I have to up my protein for this thing I'm working on. <sighs> Get me um, four eggs scrambled. Uh, six pieces of turkey bacon and uh, a fruit cup from Seven Mile. I'll have Abigail pick it up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Easy. Uh, I do have a question from Crystal. How do you heal and move on from a narcissistic marriage where there has been nothing but lies, manipulation, and cheating, but family is pressuring you to stay? This, this, read that again. I know I'm, I'm yeah, acting yeah, like no, a, no, a Baptist do. preacher that's having his congregation read for him, but these are. That's good. Ooh. How do you heal and move on from a narcissistic marriage where there has been nothing but lies, manipulation, and cheating, but family is pressuring you to stay? So this is what made me drop my first F-bomb. This scenario right here. Yep. If y'all want to know the first time I use strong language on this pod. It was with Jenna Mountain around this right here. The church has deified marriage and idolized marriage to the point that we would rather keep people in abusive relationships for the sake of marriage than to have somebody go through a divorce. Child, please. So here's how you move on. And I'm going to have to tell you something that's tough. What's her name? Crystal. Crystal, I love you. I'm going to have to tell you something that's tough. Um, and it's going to be tough to execute. You're going to need... So here, here's what's going to be required for you to do what I'm about to tell you to do. You need a support system outside of your family. You're going to need three to five people outside of your family that support you, believe in you, and believe in the decision that you are making, right? You're going to need that support system because here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to draw some strong boundaries with your family. Your family does not does not love you. 
I know that's hard. I'm so sorry. I know that's hard to hear. Um, but your family don't love you. They don't. Um, if they want, if they would rather you stay in an abusive relationship, even though you've communicated to them the type of abuse that you're taking, they don't love you and they don't believe you. It's not even that they don't believe in you. They actually don't believe you. They, it, they have completely invalidated the experience you've had with this man. They have literally heard you say everything that brought you to the painful decision of divorcing this man and told you to stay with his behind anyway. Do you see, do you see where it comes from for me? 100%. Strong. When I have strong feelings, that's where the strong language comes from. I'm not just over here flippantly using it. Some stuff ain't egregious to me. I'm so sorry. I have a vast vocabulary. Some stuff ain't terrible. Some stuff is not simply devastating. That's why I like the perspective of them being charged words. They're just charged words. You got your your family out here trying to tell you to go home and probably going to slap a scripture on it as well. And you're being abused by a narcissist, narcissist and you got the bravery to step away and they won't even support you? Mm. Your family, not his? Man, please, get out. Hear me on that one. I don't like divorce. God hates it. And get out. Because <laughs> your husband, Ben, broke his covenant vow. So all you're, all you're doing by divorcing him is, is letting him know that you don't get to that that he doesn't get to treat you like this. Hey, y'all got the y'all got the right one, baby. I run on game on this. This is how I listen, this is how I live my life. I live my life telling people how to navigate life with scripture. We can hold the tension of scripture. God hates divorce. He sure does, but I'm gonna tell you what he hates. I'm gonna tell you what he hates. And I know this can go both ways. So before the men start doing that dumb thing, that I mean, I have so many men that when I when I'm when I'm trying to advocate for women, but but you know, girls be doing the same thing too. I give nothing, bring nothing. Hey, dog, man up, stop playing. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is Malachi chapter number two, verse number 13. Here is another thing you do. You cover the Lord's altar with tears, weeping and groaning because he pays no attention to your offerings and doesn't accept them with pleasure. You cry out, why doesn't the Lord accept my worship? I'll tell you why. Because the Lord witnessed the vows you and your wife made when you were young, but you have been unfaithful to her, though she remained your faithful partner the wife of your marriage vows. Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? In body and spirit, you are his. And what does he want? Godly children from your union. So guard your heart, remain loyal to the wife of your youth. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty, says the Lord of heaven's armies. So guard your heart and do not be unfaithful to your wife. Let's get it. Here's what some of y'all jokers think. Y'all think divorce happens when the decree happens. I can't tell you how many marriages are in divorce right now, but on paper, they're still married. They live in separate bedrooms. They haven't had sex in eight months. Y'all been divorced. You divorced your wife when you started cheating on her. Every time you take one of your company trips, mm -hmm. you get yourself a nice suite with a little conjoining room and your escort goes to that room. And then you just unlock the little partition door in the middle and she gets to come over. Ask me how I know. I'm the wrong one, except I'm the right one. I expose all this foolishness. So I'm just telling you, a lot of people been divorced. They just haven't gone through with the process yet. I know women that are using their bodies as a manipulative tool for the man. I'm not giving you none because I'm mad at you. I don't expect you to have angry sex, but I don't expect you to be a witch either.
So I applaud Crystal for leaving this man, and I grieve with Crystal for having to deal with the family unit that doesn't support the, the difficult decision she's had to make. She's not walking away from a good man who loves on her and dotes on her and is attuned to her needs and is vulnerable with her and looks out for her best interests. Ain't nobody married to Mr. Perfect. Ain't nobody married to Mrs. Perfect. But you've long since abandoned your vows if you're a narcissist. I have performed countless weddings, more weddings than I can count at this point in my life. Do you forsake all others for her alone? You want me to dig into that statement? That includes you, fool. <laughs> do you forsake all others for her alone? I do. I will. That includes you, man. So you're going to be a narcissist, abuse this woman, and then gaslight her and make her think it's her fault as to why y'all getting a divorce. You let your body go. I told you I wanted to stay at home, Mom. You gained seven extra pounds. You have stretch marks now. I wanted a more career woman. I wanted a woman that would just really ride with me. Man, if you don't get your pitiful excuses out of here, I ain't the one. I ain't the one. I know you six seven and could probably stomp me in the ground if we got in a fight. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but these words are gonna haunt you forever. You're a coward, fam. That type of man is a straight up coward. There's literally no integrity and no in character and no character in you. And you can't make enough money to fill the vacuum of a hole that you have on the inside of your heart. And that's why you need all that, all those women. And that's why you need more money. And that's why you need more recognition. And that's why you need to climb higher. You're already in the C-suite. Now, you in, now we need to start another business. Now I need another degree. I can't come home. I got to keep driving. I'm on the grind. You don't love yourself, Dad. You don't love yourself, dog. That's the bottom line. You just don't love yourself. And that's why you can't stay home. So don't blame it on her. Just, just tell the truth. You running from you. That's what you're running from. You're running from you. And when you run from you, you know what you do to everybody else in your life? You run them off. Next. Oh, 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 somebody got the kicks on. Hey. And a shout out to Bree Hayes. She just texted us this photo. She's wearing the shoes you sent her. <laughs> They look dope on you, Bree. Let's go. Those are fire. Yeah, let's make sure we put that on our Insta stories. Oh. Juliana. On it. Juliana already posted it. <laughs> why do I even think about anything? This is what I'm talking about. This is why Juliana. Yeah, I won the lottery when I got you, girl. Oh my goodness. All right, this question is from Diane. Um, hi, Tim. How can I forgive myself of sin? I fully believe that God forgave me through Jesus, but I cannot walk in freedom because of the disgrace I have for my actions. Oh, sweetheart. Oh. So, so let me tell you first, I'm so happy that you're bummed with your actions. You love Jesus for real. Because I know people out here preaching on Sundays. And they hoeing by Sunday afternoon. Some some people some people get um uh they go preach at a church and they get an honorarium and they get their choice of a male or a female. Just so y'all know how wicked the game could be in the church. That ain't everybody's church. I'm I'm just saying. There's some there's some chitlin. I call I re affectionately refer to those type of churches as chitlin circuit churches. I'm so happy you're convicted of your sins. Yay. But don't drown in them. Conviction and drowning are two different things. I'm happy you're convicted of your sins. Don't drown in them. He throws your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Why are you jumping in the sea? Don't 
Don't do that. You acknowledge it, you learn from it, and you move on. He loves you right now. He loves you right where you are. And so um, I talked about this before, but then, again, people, church people are just wild. Church people are just wild. They listen to a person talk for 90 seconds, and then they have a whole dissertation. I'm like, did you ever go back and listen to the whole thing? No. I didn't need to. Who needs context? So here's the thing. You, you missed the mark. You sinned. You failed. You, 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 you failed, right? We've all come short of the glory of God. Right? So you're in great company. <laughs> <laughs> you're in great company, right? But you, you, you feel convicted by it. Boom, I did. I, I shouldn't have done that. You, you did that. You, Jesus, I repent. Cool, you repent. You know you're forgiven. I, I'm so grateful I'm forgiven. You got to get up and move around. You got to you got to get back up and you got to start walking again. You cannot sit in that beating yourself up. You weren't designed to hold that. This is this is what the blood of Jesus is for. Since Genesis chapter number 3 has been shame on humanity. Mm. Jesus' blood came to take shame off humanity. So that we could be naked before him again and not ashamed. So my encouragement is to you is to, to, to really accept what he did. For you to accept his forgiveness and still feel bad about it is to not honor the forgiveness that you accepted. Let me, let me give you a, a parable, something my rabbi, our rabbi has done often. So um, you had $88,000 in student loans. And it was crippling you. And I give you $90,000. So you have 90000 So you so So I get, your, your student loan is 88000 I give you ninety, So you can pay off 88000 and you have 2000 left over. Let me tell you how you're acting right now. Starting with the $2,000, you try to repay me with it. And say, now I owe you 86. That's not the move, fam. Accept the forgiveness. The debt has been cleared. And you're in the plus with $2,000. Go buy some shoes. Don't put yourself on suspension. You are not grounded, baby. You are free. Get up and go eat a burger. With your favorite slice of cheese. So, so, so don't, don't try to repay somebody. Uh, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. Ooh. So I was in, um, I was in uh, uh, Tampa, Florida over the weekend at Courageous Church with my dear friends, uh, Ontario and Crystal Green, who are the pastors there. If you are ever in the Tampa area and you need to uh, go to church, uh, Please go to Courageous. It's a great church. If you live in the Tampa area, go to Courageous. If you live around the Tampa area, we got people fly, not flying in, but driving in from St. Petersburg and some other places. I, I don't know Tampa that well, so maybe Bradenton is another city. I don't know. If you're over there, just go check out the church. It's beautiful. So we, we, went, to, we, went, to a, um, we went to a nice restaurant. They took me to a nice restaurant on Saturday evening, and the Holy Spirit told me to bless the the um, the waitress. So I blessed the waitress. The waitress is weeping, and she's, like, trembling, like, oh, my God, this is, I don't, can I give you a hug? Yes, of course. So we give her a hug, and I, I, I have a Terry Cloth shirt on, so the hug's dope. So, um, uh, uh, so then she's like, oh, my God, I promise you I'm going to pay it forward. And I said, don't do that. And she was like, what? I said, don't pay it forward. This, all this money is for you. I said, if you feel obligated to pay it forward, you can't even enjoy what you have now. Exactly. Now you feel this pressure to pay it forward. I learned this from Michael Jr. If, if I'm at a Starbucks and that somebody says, hey, somebody paid for your coffee, I'm not now obligated to pay for the person behind me. I'm obligated to say thank you. If I feel like Oh, man, I would love to do the same thing for somebody else. Cool. But if not, I might just get a free cup of coffee and chunk deuces. 
I don't owe you nothing. <laughs> Who paying Jesus back for that blood? Do I need to break it down to that level? Who's paying Jesus back for that blood? Anybody else returning the favor, jumping on a cross? Hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So just say thank you, babe. And move on. I promise you. I promise you. You're going to do something else. So you might as well enjoy this time to you <laughs> until your next time that you got to say, my bad, Lord, and forgive me. Don't, don't, don't be that hard on yourself. Do not be that hard on yourself. And in the famous words that you've taught us, we have permission to enjoy ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be a slave mm -mm. to whatever it is and whatever narrative is in our head saying that we need to be a slave. We're not going to do it. You want to keep going with questions? Let's go, man. This is beautiful. This got is you, bro. a good day. All right, we got one here. Uh, hey, Tim, my name is Kenzie, and I had a question. This past Saturday, I had an episode where I spiraled out of control, anxiety attack due to a number of things that were overwhelming my spirit. What advice would you give to someone who um, has lost his way but is trying through God's grace to get back on track? Mm. Anxiety is a booger, man. Mm -hmm. when, that, when that amygdala flares up, and you get into that flight, flight, freeze or fold. Oh, it can be so debilitating. So I'm just, you know, I'm an empath. So I'm just resting with everybody's story. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. But you got that anxiety. Um, Self-talk is important. I'm talking, I'm talking a lot about this with uh, Nathan and Noah right now. I want you to, um, you got to change the self-talk when that, when that anxiety spikes. Um, there's some things that you need to say and probably some things that you need to do on the, um, let me, let, let, let me start with the self-talk first. There's a different story you need to tell yourself when your anxiety spikes. There's a different story that you need to tell yourself when the anxiety spikes, you need to rehearse a different narrative. When that anxiety peaks, you are telling yourself a story either consciously or subconsciously. You're telling yourself a story. What I need you to do, what's this dude's name again? Uh, Kenzie. Ken, Ken, and it's a dude? Or it might be a girl, I don't know. It says Kenzie August, and it did say, was referred to as a man. Okay, gotcha, so. okay. I, I, it could be a unisex name, so I just want to make sure I had it right. Uh, addressing this person right. So, Kenzie, uh, you need to change the self-talk, and here's your homework. I need you to write down what that new self-talk needs to be. I could give you a whole bunch of anecdotal things to write down. Um, I could give you a whole bunch of scriptures, but I think you need to do some work around this. I, you'll appreciate the narrative more if it comes from you and not me. So I need you to do some work. And don't make this hard, okay? I just want you to write down three to five sentences of some things that you can tell yourself that are in the positive if you got a scripture to attach it to, cool. If not, it's all good. I want this to be very, very simple for you, though. Um, uh, three to five sentences that when that anxiety spikes, when that cortisol level pops up, that you have something you can tell yourself when that happens that will help to kind of regulate you. Because you don't want to be believe the lie that's intertwined with anxiety. So that's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is you need some self-soothing techniques when you go through an anxiety spike. And I don't know if that's putting on a certain genre of music. I'm not sure if maybe going outside and maybe walking clears your head. But do something to ground yourself so that you know that whatever peaked this anxiety is not bigger than the world that you live in. Right, because that's the lie that anxiety tells us. Is this is overwhelming. I won't be able to deal with this. And it, it, can, it can seem debilitating and soul crushing when we don't have a way to make it shrink. Mm -hmm. yep. So there's a new narrative I need you to write for yourself. And um, when, those, when those spikes happen, I need you to have a way out for yourself. That's, for like, very, very accessible. Not something that's blinding that... 
when the anxiety is there, you're like, I always forget to even do that thing because anxiety came. I, I just need you to have like a practical out. So I hope that helps. And just from the, the partner standpoint, for me, growing up in the hood, I came up very ignorant to the all the things about anxiety. So when I had gotten married, my wife legitimately struggled with it. And I was a jerk because I didn't get it. I was so ignorant and I was rude. Mm. And in the back of my head, I subconsciously was like, man, this girl is making this up. Like, mm. And it's so it's so like invalidating and it, it shows that you don't really care for them or believe them. So I would just encourage the person who has felt the way I felt in the past just have good. a lot of empathy. Yeah, a lot of empathy, and then the yes. real cheat code. I didn't learn this till maybe four years into my marriage, mm -hmm. dude. Putting my hand physically on my my girl's back, and just like a little back rub. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. It's it literally it works, and it just calms them down because they just need to know they don't want to hear you talking. Right. My wife definitely is like, don't talk me through this. Right, right, right. Exactly. It's just the little <laughs> hand where she's like, Hector, please shut up. Enough, mm. enough with the Oak Cliff stuff. So that's what I would say. Have a lot of empathy and uh, just be available to be there for them. And you don't have to give them a speech. It's beautiful. Yeah. Dope. Um, Sherry says that you say often uh, we can't properly le we leave unless we properly grieve and wants to know what does it look like to properly grieve? Mm -hmm. So um, I'll use myself as an example. So I transitioned from being a lead pastor. And I, bless you, I transitioned from being a lead pastor and I literally had to grieve the loss of the security I felt in that role, the comfort I felt in that role, the familiarity I felt with that role, the anonymity I felt with that role compared to this one. Um, I had to grieve it. I had to acknowledge that those things mattered to me and that I cared about them. And then I needed to sit with all of them and say goodbye. Like I literally had to write a eulogy to my last season. I had to say goodbye to lead pastor of Embassy City, Tim Ross. That dude's gone. And so um, acknowledging your grief, sitting with your grief, and when I say sit with your grief, I'm not saying you got to be in sackcloth and ashes for 30 days. But you're bringing it up and you're saying, hey, I miss, I'm going to miss the comfort I had as a lead pastor to step out in front of a congregation every week that knew me, loved me, understood me, encouraged me and supported me and communicate the gospel to them. I'm going to miss that. I'm sad to see that go. Because as a podcaster, I give out content and I don't know who the hell sees it. And I don't know what they think about it. And they might agree with it. They might not. This is not a congregation. We have a dweller community. And then we have a broader audience. That audience sometimes enjoys content and sometimes they hate it. Oh, I'm going to miss you, Tim Ross, lead pastor of Embassy City. You were amazing. I liked just being that guy. I'm grieving it. So, so grief doesn't have to look like, you know, I'm looking at a picture of me preaching on Sunday morning and just weeping over it. <laughs> Why are you going, man? <laughs> hey, dog, I'll go back and see you no more. <laughs> No, you, you just acknowledge that this was important to you, that this was meaningful to you and for you, and you give yourself proper space to say goodbye to it, and then you move on to the next. So I hope that helps. I would also add to this because... Add uh, now. Add something, here, Sammy. Here's the here's a dynamic that I just recently like has stepped into. I've had to grieve my expectations for certain seasons mm. and what I wanted it to be versus what it was. And, and there's certain things that like in my life, I would just carry that and I'd be mm -hmm. upset and I'd be mad and I'd take it out on people. And it's like, I'm not grieving my own expectations. Right. And that's, I mean, that's helped me significantly. It's just being able to say like, oh, I really wanted it to be this and it's not. Right. Yeah, bro. So, um, yeah, I, 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 um, uh, 
I've gotten good at grief because my life coach is always saying, you need to do your grief work. We need to do your grief work. You need to do your grief work. You need to do your grief work. You need to do your grief work. Thankfully, she doesn't sound like that. Um, <laughs> but but that's what she's always saying. And, and it's very, very helpful. It's just very, very helpful. So. Is that it? Want to keep going? Yeah, let's go. Oh, they're, they're coming through, bro. Let's get it. Yep. Uh, so this one is, again, I don't want to say their name wrong, but we're just going to go with it. Okay. Um, I think it is Tishawana Ellis. What is the cheat code to feeling rejected and ignored and being sad slash offended or angry about it when it's uh, been a pattern? I feel that people overlook me all the time from my context to when I ask a question in community group chats to people who all of a sudden switch up and get distance. Am I too emotional? Dash Tish. All right, Tish. I love you. Thank you for asking the question. Here's what I want to ask you. Um, who are these people mm. that you feel rejected by? Mm. That's good. Because you say you feel rejected, but then you specifically said sometimes when you make a comment, people ignore you. Are you saying that in like a social media space? Or are you saying that in 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 person? Um, if it's social media, my advice to you is you, you cannot allow acceptance or rejection on social media to dictate your importance and your affirmation. That's numero uno. Numero dos. Um, I need you to investigate the friendships that you have. I want you to be curious about them. I want you to take your your top five friends or the top five people you most frequently hang out with, top five people you text, five, top five people you talk to on the phone. And I want you to ask yourself a very sobering question, Tish. Is this person for me? If we were to skeet shoot, and I just threw up some names right now, Brenda, is this person for me, yes or no? Tamika, is this person for me, yes or no? Bianca, is this person for me, yes or no? It's either a yes or a no. If you got to get into some, you know, some. I mean, they cool, like, for some things, but, like, for the other, nope, the answer is no. All you want to know is... Who's for you? That's, who, that's the only question I want you to ask right now. I don't, I don't even want to ask if this person's spiritual, if they're on your same level, if they equally yoke. None of that. No, 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 no. Who is for you? Whether it's one person, three people, five people, seven people, whatever. Start leaning into those friendships. Dig into those friendships. And all the people you feel rejected by, let them go. Because they already told you how they feel about you. By not telling you how they feel about you. Can I tell y'all something that I hope will, will stick with you for the rest of your life? People are always telling you who they are. Sometimes they use their words. Most times they just use their actions. You show me somebody... That every time y'all go out, they late, they're telling you what they feel about you. You're not that important. You're cool, but not cool enough to show up on time. They're telling you how they feel about you. Sometimes they use their words. Most times they use their actions. People are always telling you who they are. So you have to be able to discern the people that are in your corner and the people that are not. And when you find the people that are in your corner, lean into them. The rest of these jokers, let them go. Because I promise you, you don't need them. Timmy, I know we're going crazy on the pod, but we do have 10 minutes till our guest pops up. Oh, cool. So just, just a little reminder. Okay. Um, I hope that helped. Uh, Ariel, uh, I just my eyes just fell on this. Hey, Tim, what are your thoughts on sex dreams? I've had dreams where... I have cheated on or was about to cheat on my husband with another man. I wake up feeling so gross, guilty, and full of shame. Mm. Hey, if the enemy can't get you conscious, he'll come after you subconsciously. Yep. 
I, I refer to those as invading thoughts. Mm. Right? You might need to go to sleep with some... Um, I have a playlist. It's actually on YouTube. Let me find it for you. Cheat code incoming. Where is she? Did she leave? It already probably popped up. I can't remember where she was now. Anyway, you, you know I read your 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 question. Okay, let me find let me find this. Um, let me find this. I'm subscribed to it. I just gotta find it. Where is it? Do you know the name of it? I'm about to. I'm I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. I know the little. It's just a little worship. Um, soaking in his presence. So soaking in his presence, there's like these little cartoon hands that are reaching up in the sky. It has 285,000 subscribers. And, yo, they got like, 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 like the, I'm just going off of what's the latest, right? All the glory, instrumental worship, soaking in his presence, 59 minutes and 26 seconds. Lovely father, instrumental worship, soaking in his presence, four hours and one minute. On the nights where I feel like the enemy's trying to like beat me up the most, they got some, they got some, um, some joints in here. It's like thirteen hours. It's amazing. It's wild. So I put it on before I go to sleep. I wake up. It's still, it's still doing the thing. So, um, playlist. Where are these playlists at? I put a link to the channel in, in the chat for you. Who right? are you? You guys are the best. Just stop playing. You guys are too dope for me. I can't take it. Yeah, there's one on here. Sovereignty of God, instrumental worship, eight hours, 12 minutes. If you're sleeping over eight hours, you are on vacation. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, 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 uh, I understand that. I've 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 had those I've had those dreams. And I I mean I pop up in the morning. I'm you know, I pop up in the morning, turn over, look at Juliet and and my eyes I'm like, I didn't do nothing. I swear I didn't do nothing. I promise you. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. Um but then if if the enemy can't get you awake, he'll try to get you sleep. And so you got to guard, you got to guard that state. Um set that atmosphere. Uh put on some worship music, some instrumental stuff. Um Put it in your headphones. You know what I mean? My wife actually has a little headband that has speakers in it. And that's what she listens to uh, going to bed. She, not that particular playlist, but she has some worship music that she'll listen to. You might want to put the uh, put auto, uh, audio Bible on. Mm -hmm. Let that word come in. Um, but I promise you, there are more people. Let's, listen, we already got one of the most transparent communities of all time. I need everybody in the um chat that has had a sex dream to uh just put a little hand in the air. That little me hand, like that's me. I'm gonna find my little emoji. I'm putting like five, I'm gonna put like fifteen of them. It's fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> you see all these hands going up? You ain't alone, homie. Them sex dreams be real. Somebody said, shoot, last night. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone, girl. Hector crazy with his <laughs> with his pose. I could have I could have hit both of these. I'm 43%. A, I'm a little freak. I'm a freak and and, and going crazy. And it's just crazy. And I'm going crazy. So 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 you're not alone, sweetheart. <laughs> Somebody said, not a little freak. <laughs> Um. All right, yeah. So, yeah. So that's that. Okay, I saw. It. I'm seeing this one. Uh, yeah. Okay, Rebecca. Let me hit this real quick. This will be my last one before I dip. What are your thoughts? On, Cause I've heard this a lot. I've seen and heard this a lot from people. Uh, uh. What are your thoughts on spiritual marriage before God? Versus legally, do you think that it's biblical or possible before the real wedding, or do you think it's deception? It's deception. I'm telling it to you now. All, all this spiritual marriage is, listen, any anything, 
um, we live in a country where there are some godly b- biblical principles, right? Uh, people think that I'd be ranting against America. I- I'm not ranting against America. All I'm saying is biblical principles are not biblical commandments, two, two totally different things. And so this, this whole, uh, anybody that would want to propose a spiritual marriage to you that's not legal would almost be the equivalent of saying, I want to be with you, but I don't want it to be public. I want to buy a house with you, but I want your name on the deed. <laughs> right? And so I've 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 seen these I've seen these jokers get into these little um cults where it's like, hey, we'll marry you right now. I'm an ordained minister and I can stand in the stead of God and pronounce you husband and wife and y'all can have sex tonight. Gotta be with you. Nah, fam, pull that paper out, too. Pull that paper out, too, because you ain't about to get these draws. And in six months from now, uh, how how we, how do we even get divorced? We just break up? We just spiritually get divorced? Nah, fam. You love me. You're going to put some paper behind me. You're going to put some paper behind me. I bet you don't get these. You ain't getting nothing if it ain't legal. Care what nobody say. Y'all could be sitting up there talking about some, uh, uh, well, you know, uh, marriage wasn't like this and and we should all be polygamous because, you, you know, uh, marriage was, was for contract and land and, and for power and to all this stuff. Say what you want, but you can't, you, you can't change Genesis too. He brought one man to one woman. So sorry. So sorry. It don't matter what the what humanity tried to do with the institution afterwards or how complicated it got, but I will let you know. Yeah, B. Wilson, we'll bring it to Atlanta. Why not? Okay, um, that's it, y'all. We got to go. I got to pee. I drank all this water. 619 status shout out moderating that's the dude right there Derek is a real one bro Derek is a real one he's putting it on for us every week yeah absolutely we love you so much uh Ameritrini said how do I become a dweller um dweller is ten dollars a month on uh YouTube on YouTube If, if you if you're asking about financial support if you're just asking about how do I become a dweller, girl, you already you already won. If you in the live chat, you you dwelling with us. You know what I'm saying? You listen, you adopt this philosophy of the basement. You already dwelling with us, so don't so don't worry about it. No Kool Aid. Ro- 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 no Kool Aid over here. No Nikes to wear. No banana pudding. Uh, <laughs> Rosie Mata, I know you just got here, but now we gotta go. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, Dana Johnson Calker, uh, when when am I coming to London? Um, I'll be there. I'll come to London. Um, Joseph Duarte, you want to ask me a question through Instagram? You'll be asking Huli. Uh, <laughs> Small Colombian woman will be answering. Absolutely. Uh, what is this one? Okay, I can't answer no more. I'm still seeing y'all ask questions. Belgium, I'll come to Belgium in a heartbeat. Uganda, I love you, Clarissa. Thank you for listening. Uh, Toronto, I love you. Midwest, for sure, I'll come to the Midwest. Raleigh, North Carolina, why not? Houston, Florida, South Africa. We gonna, we gonna make it happen. We we got Finland. I'll come to Finland. Don't play SL. Don't think I won't. Brazil, not without my wife. I'm just telling you what I know. Freakville. I, I cannot go to Brazil without my wife. Handcuffed. West Covina, where the grass is green. And let's go, Lorenzo. I love you guys. I love y'all so much. This whole repping on, on the way out. Montgomery, Alabama, New York, Jersey, in the building, Charlotte, North Carolina, Birmingham, England, Chicago, Connecticut, East Point, Georgia. Weren't we just we was just in we was just in East Point last week. Yep. Yep. We was yep. in East Point last week. Yep. And our Uber driver was being rude about it too. He was. <laughs> 
try to tell me like like oh this is a rough part of town. I said I'm good on any MLK Boulevard. Y'all act like my black card don't work. I was with it. Tulsa, Oklahoma. New Mexico, Maui. I'm praying for y'all still, Maui. Mc McDonough. Mc McDonough, I think McDonald's, it is. Praise God. No, McDonough. <laughs> Hamburg, Georgia, Denver, Oregon, Massachusetts, Redding, California. Let's go. Redding, St. Louis, San Antonio, Alaska, Las Vegas, Norfolk. Woo! Y'all, y'all, y'all murking this chat right now. Oh, I'm ready for the Alaska trip, my guy. Yo, y'all beating this thing up. A 1.1 on a month? On the Man, afternoon. Hey, I love y'all so much. Hey, listen, we got a great week. Who who what's the lineup this week? Hey, we got uh tomorrow Jenna Mountain. Jenna oh! Mountain. And I'll tell you what, oh! that episode. Y'all ain't ready. Mm -mm. Y'all are not ready for that conversation I got with Jenna Mountain. She is she is here tomorrow. That's gonna be dope. She always brings a pivotal she does. shift. Oh, hey. In every episode. Hey, y'all, y'all have to. Get everybody, get everybody, get ev get white people, get black people, get get interracial couples, get bi get biracial children, not children, <laughs> may maybe young adults. I don't know. Get just get everybody, Everyone. get everybody. That 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 conversation went had turns that I did not expect. It was fire. Okay, so that's Tuesday, and we're really winning this week because we're ending it Thursday with victory. <gasps> victory, Boyd, y'all. Okay, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all something. I'm gonna tell y'all something. This is this. Oh, this week is gonna be crazy. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna tell y'all something. I'm gonna tell y'all something. All right, hold on. I'm gonna tell y'all something. I'm not because I don't want you to walk into Thursday blind. Right. Right. Tuesday night's gonna be bomb. I can't let you walk into Thursday blind because Thursday drops at noon. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm right, telling y'all right now. I'm telling you right now. Pack a lunch. Mm-hmm. Victory Boyd got signed to Rockefeller. R Rock Nation. She's a Rock Nation artist. Jay-Z signed her personally. She's a believer in Jesus Christ. Our pod, no cap, was four hours. It's the first four-hour pod ever. It is compelling. It is thought provoking. She sings. She performed for us. She's no auto tune, no acoustics, no nothing. Girl's voice is butter and loves Jesus. If you want to be up on game, you need to go buy her album or go listen to it on iTunes or Spotify between now and Thursday, just so you can be up on game. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who she is already, you about to know. It's the first four hour pod. <laughs> Even saying it, I can't, we went four hours. Was it like four hours and six minutes or something crazy like this? Yeah. yeah. All right, y'all. Had to come out on a Thursday. It had to come out on a Thursday. Y'all, y'all, y'all gonna be able to go to work Come back, <laughs> wash your car on the weekend, <laughs> go to church, come back, and then go back. Uh, You're you going to have a lot of time to get through that pod. Her name is Victory Boyd. Victory Boyd. Will you put a link yes, sir. to her album? Absolutely. In the, um, Absolutely. Either on, uh, make it on iTunes or Spotify, whatever. Um, Victory Boyd, y'all. How many times do I need to say it? <laughs> Victory Boyd. All right, I typed it in myself. All right. How do I get basement merch shipped to Kenya? We're working on it. We're working on it's it. It's coming soon, guys. It is coming because... Yeah, there was, I went to Australia, and these people were like, how come your stuff only goes to the U.S.? And I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm on sabbatical. <laughs> All right, we got to go eat. We got somebody else that we need to make something for. Okay, love you. Bye.
just thought to take a little time out to thank the Lord.